Well, it seems like everyone in the press and on television had an opinion about gun control, as you just saw, but by far the least serious commentary came, not surprisingly, from comedians on late night TV. As always, the less a person knows about firearms, the more enthusiastic they tend to be about controlling those firearms with new laws. One example is Daily Show host Trevor Noah, who got defensive when a journalist pointed out he's not even American. It was some guy on the news, and he was on me hard. I think we have the clip here. I can show it to you. The day after that horrible shooting in Las Vegas, it really struck the wrong chord for a lot of Americans to hear people like Trevor Noah from South Africa, and they're basically looking down their nose at us about our gun laws versus the gun laws in their native lands. Uh, this is an American conversation. I would argue most of the problems we face in the world come from the fact that people don't deal with issues that they don't have to deal with. What does that even mean? <laughs> Nothing, of course. But we've invited media contributing editor Larry O'Connor to join us. Nevertheless, Larry, it's it's great to see you. You wrote such a smart piece, I thought, yesterday. Thank you. About the internal contradiction in this debate. So here you have liberals denouncing the executive branch, the federal government, as run by Donald Trump, as racist and you know intent on killing people, basically, and then simultaneously arguing. <laughs> They should control all the firearms. Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, thank you. And, you know, Tucker, I, I do talk radio here in Washington on WMAL, and I was able to sort of develop this idea with my really intelligent listeners. They call in and they say, you know, let's look at this for a minute. Look at the main dominant stories of the last week. Uh, defending NFL football players for uh, dishonoring our flag because this is a racist nation who allows law enforcement to kill innocent people because of their color. And at the same time, the Trump administration is either so incompetent or so racist because they won't give give aid to the victims of a hurricane in Puerto Rico, and yet we want to take all of the guns from the American people and give them to a racist, incompetent, evil government and let them decide who gets to have a weapon. I don't know about you, but if a hurricane comes or some <laughs> other natural disaster and the government actually can't do anything or won't do anything to help me, I'd like to have a gun around at my disposal. You know, I, it's just well, a good idea, I think. I get, I'm sympathetic to some of the emotion around shootings like this. I see a shooting like this, and I just feel so enraged and sad for the country and impotent because, you, you know, who knows what to do about it. What I don't understand is to take that emotion and go immediately into a public forum and start denouncing people without having thought through what you're calling for, which is what yeah. you've seen again and again. Well, I don't think they're thinking it through. And I think that the overriding argument that we keep butting heads about here with regard to wanting to do something, and of course, I want to do something too. I want to go and embrace everyone who lost a life or lost a loved one in Las Vegas. It's, it's horrible. And I, I look at those people who died and I look at my own children and it tears me apart. I want to do something. However, we also have basic rights and basic freedoms in this country. And the conflict between wanting to do something to make a perfect society versus allowing individual Americans to enjoy the freedoms and rights that we have fought for for so long, uh, uh, this is the constant conflict in this country. The problem is when one side says of the other that they don't care that people die, that they don't care that people are, are slaughtered in the streets, or other, and they're only bought and paid for by the gun lobby. That, that's just a, not only an unfair, but it's a frankly evil and despicable argument. We all care. But it always goes back to the same argument. It, it doesn't matter who commits the crime, whether it's a jihadi or some millionaire, creepy professional gambler from outside Vegas. It's always the fault of middle America. Have you noticed that that's, yeah. that's the default position from Hillary Clinton, from all these organized gun groups in D.C.? It's your fault, you in the middle of the country with yeah. your 30 out 6 yeah, How does that and, work? How is it their and, fault? And think about it, Tucker. Those are the people who, uh, you know, because those states went red and put Donald Trump in right. the White House. For how many months now have we been told that Donald Trump is a fascist? He's this century's Adolf Hitler. Now, if our democratic republic is so fragile that Adolf Hitler could become our president, my God, why would we want to not be able to arm ourselves? I mean, just in case. And why would we want right. Adolf Hitler to be the one who decides who gets a gun and who doesn't? We've seen that story play out. It's not a good one. No, you're totally right. You're applying logic here. One of the rare people who is. Larry, thanks a lot for joining thanks, us. Larry, well, you are too, darn it.